Ah, weight loss. Dieting. One of America's favorite spectator sports. Pics of food and before and afters all over Instagram. The HR department organizing a fitness challenge. But what do the pros do when it comes to losing fat or weight? This is Todd in an episode 103 with Amir Mofi, Tyler Mounts, and Dr. Alice Nguyen. We're going to share our favorite tactics for sticking to your diet plan. Stark Naked Radio from Southern California, where we talk about strategy, butts, goals, blood chemistry, lifestyle, IV therapy, poop, tips, digestion, and science, science, science to help you look better naked and perform at your best. Pour some sugar on me <laughs> in the name of love. Pour some sugar. That's Anyways, good. All right, that's good. That's, that's good. Right. Right. I was going right. Uh, it's creative can, outside we, the box. Are we not going to acknowledge our new producer? Oh, well, who is that? I, I, I forget <laughs> his name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Production by Jessica Watts. That's it. That's all she gets. Jessica Watts is our new producer. Jessica Watts Films. Which means she's going to get <laughs> uh, ridiculed, but never heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are have no voice. <laughs> yeah. But she's like super cute, super talented, and we're happy, we're happy to have her producing the program. She's all right. But we are happy. Okay, I take all that back. She's she's dece. <laughs> yeah. she's dece, dece. real real dece. Yeah, Welcome she, aboard, Jessica. Welcome. If she if, if she had a microphone, she would, you know. Say, oh my gosh, it. thank you. Yeah, you could actually Jessica stand up and say say hello to everybody. Oh my god, thank you so much. Oh my god. There she is. That's all you get from and Jessica. That's the last but no one will know which one was me and which one was her. Because <laughs> it's the same. <sighs> so, Amir, you want to start us off? No. Well, I, I can. It, 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 it feels like it feels like hunger. So, so Todd is the. So let's well, let's okay. Let's talk about a what background. dieting means. Okay, a little background. Okay, so the act of dieting that doesn't mean going on a diet or beginning a diet. That means that you are in one way or another, uh, in a deficit of caloric intake. Now. Whether you count them or you don't, whether you think they count or they don't, or you think they don't, whether you think it's a spaghetti fairy that comes in <laughs> that, that uh, adds to your to your fat ass, like wh- whatever it, you think you're doing, either through exercise or through food manipulation or the combination of the two, you're creating a deficit of calories to lose body fat, body weight. That's uh, important to understand because that's a very loaded term, right? Yeah. Dieting. Yeah. Uh, so actively dieting means you're actively creating and maintaining a deficit of intake one way or another. Uh, and the, uh, the net result of that is going to be ideally, you know, weight loss. But at some point that starts to, you know, wear on you. So for people who are, who we're working with, Mm -hmm. 100% of them are on a nutrition plan. A certain percentage, those that are trying to reduce body fat or body weight are dieting. Is that a good way of thinking about it? Because Every, yeah. everyone should be monitoring nutritional intake, but only those who are trying to reduce body fat or body weight will be, quote unquote, dieting, right? That would be accurate. Yeah, that'd be accurate. What's your hesitation? Well, I, I just, I, well, I just want, to ref, I want, to, I want to think about the words that you were using. So because I don't want to say it's accurate when it's not accurate, then I'll like listen to the podcast and be pissed. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, I should have said it was accurate. <laughs> I should have said something to him. But yeah, so the, everyone is monitoring their, their nutrition either from uh, probably a combination of total intake and micro intake. Uh, and so... And what do you a, mean micro intake? Like, uh, you know, Dr. Alice's... Uh, runs a we we run extensive panels on people to find out what micronutrients they are deficient in, and uh, Dr. Oz can elaborate more on that. Uh, so we re- we do what's called repletion therapy, where we kind of kind of re- reconstitute those levels. Uh, so some people are not in any kind of hurry or even concerned with body weight reduction, so they don't actively diet in that sense. But okay. some, a lot of our people do. So, but the the key takeaway is that anyone, regardless of fitness level stage or desired outcome is going to be monitoring nutritional intake in some capacity. To some degree, yeah. Yeah. The ones who are trying to reduce body fat, body weight are dieting. Yeah. Or in, uh, as we I mean, mentioned, creating a caloric if deficit. If you want to be really neurotic about it, like you're, we're all dieting because we all have a diet. We are all eating food. <laughs> like we all have dietary things that come into our mouth, you know, like, but I don't think uh, I have to kind of be that 
neurotic about it. But yeah, we're yeah. You know, so, but when we say dieting, we're talking yeah, to we're, caloric we're talking deficit. About, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so caloric deficit. So the biggest challenge is <laughs> Todd. <laughs> Uh, it's like um, hunger knocking on your door all day long. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you, 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 sometimes you have a brief m- few moments where you're where it's not you're not really hearing the knock, um, and then you hear the knock again, and you're like, now, oh, you got to remind yeah, yourself. So, oh, I, can't, I can't eat. So right let's now. put us in some context. You've been actively dieting for how long? Uh, I've been I've been uh, focused on fat loss since, uh, January, okay. mid, mid January. This, that's important to know yeah. because did you hear that hard knock, hard knock life for us? Did you hear that in January? Yeah. That, that knocking is in fact, my diet <laughs> plan, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that you guys are hearing in the background. Um, I'm sorry. What was the question? Did you hear that severe <laughs> knocking? Did you hear? <laughs> did you hear that hunger in January? No, no. That's a great question, actually. No, and 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 that was managed by actually you wrote my my nutrition plan, so that mm-hmm. was managed by you. And no, it was it was quite easy to stick to in January and February, and March. So when would you say the hunger started wrapping, wrap, wrap, wrapping on your chamber door uh, like the raven? Uh, uh, about a month ago. Okay, I would say yeah. Um, the, and the 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 weight loss. Has been fairly so. I've lost seventeen pounds since then. What a dick! And the weight loss has been fairly <laughs> st- steady. I mean, you've seen you've seen my my uh, scale oh, weight yeah. records. I've seen it. So it's been pretty steady it. week after week. It, it's you know sort of as you get leaner and leaner, it kind of slows down a little bit, which is kind of where I'm at now. Um, but but uh, certainly in those those early pounds w- wasn't much more than an afterthought for me. It wasn't very hard. And I can verify that because in the past, Todd has told me that he's like, oh, I'll just make hunger my bitch. And then <laughs> yesterday, he almost shanked me when I ate one of his <laughs> celery sticks. <laughs> he's like, I need that. It's right on my lunch. Now, I would also like to note that, you know, we, we offer our blood draw patients some, you know, nice protein bars here. And just noticed this past week oh, that I we, think like six are missing, here even we though go. we just repleted it. I was like, wait, hold on a second. Where is this all going? I did not do okay, six blood draws so uh, you've completed 20 weeks, right? So you completed yeah. 20 weeks, 17 pounds, about a pound a week, maybe like a, li- a little week here, a week there, kind of like a sluggishness. Uh-huh. So a pound a week across, but now, like you said, like the first month, it was pretty, really manageable, not even noticeable. Yeah. So it was, it was, it wasn't immediately going on a active diet that created the knocking. It was consistently applying that over a course of months, right? Right, that's right. So that's what we're really talking about. Like, if you're if you're like, oh my God, I'm so hungry, and it's like day three, like, I'm like, grow up. Like, it, it, either you <laughs> either you really were reckless with the structure of your diet, or you, like, are living next to a pizza hut, you know? Like, like, <laughs> like, like the fumes are just going right into your, into your window. It, it, it does take time for this to start to occur, right? Like, the, the, the hunger things where you need, like, you need real tips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that being said, Todd, why don't you? Ki- so the the challenge is when you get to that stage, compliance, mm. because you come home and let's be honest, you don't want to raid the pantry for kale to take the edge off. Yeah. <laughs> so what are some of the things, just practically speaking, that you're doing to help prevent yourself from giving into those cravings? Uh, well, what I do is I as I I don't t- attempt to prevent myself from the cravings because they're, they're going to happen. But what I do is I sort of bank them, you know, so I, I, I do some inter- intermittent fasting during the week, um, essentially not eating much at all during the first part of the day. Um, and then when I get home at night, I, I've got, I've got at least uh, two or three carbs left to, um, to go after when I walk in the door. So that, that's how I help manage and, and, and hit my goals. Um, uh, just by, you know, so it's, uh, an analogy that I use is it's like budgeting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you have a hundred dollars to spend, you don't get to buy a new jacket and go to dinner. You choose one or the other. And so what Todd's doing is he's opting to budget his calories for later in the day because that helps. Because I, I will be reckless and I'm tired. You know, my, my willpower is a little bit depleted. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. We're, Mamir and I are coming over 
Yeah, we, no, we did an intermittent, uh, intermittent, 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 what? Interm- intermittent we did an fasting. IF podcast. In- intermittent fisting. <laughs> <laughs> we did an oh, IF, yeah, that's right. We did that's an right. IF podcast, so you, you're not attributing your success directly to no. IF, right? So, no. But it is a tool that you use. You mean the, the actual structure of it? Yeah, no, you, no, I'm just you, talking you're about using, banking you're, use, you're, you're using it to bank your food for a little yeah. bit later, and maybe gives you a little, like, maybe a little mental clarity. Does, does it do anything for you in the middle part of the day? Like no, the not, not, not whatsoever. Actually, what, what I... What, <laughs> He's starving. <laughs> yeah, what, what I did, I made an adaptation. Yeah, he goes around fighting people over celery sticks. <laughs> I, I, I made a, a, a small adaptation to it where I have like uh, like four ounces of, of uh, let's say, turkey burger or some kind of protein mm-hmm. um, in the morning. So you're not intermittent fasting? Uh, I, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, well, so I mean, that, that, you can really disregard a, everything. You know, a little, little bit of veggies and, well, and that's actually, it. Well, it's a very, so very what, small what, meal. What he's talking about is sort of a, uh, an adapted form of nutrient timing, macronutrient yeah, timing, yeah, right? Yeah, sort of. So yeah. you're just kind of keeping the mm-hmm. more calorie-laden energy substrates Four later in the day, yeah. your fats and your carbs, basically, or you're probably not eating a lot of fat in general. Not, uh, not until lunchtime because Alice is making me eat the um, mackerel packed in olive oil and mm. and sardines packed in. Olive. So there's a lot of fat that I'm I'm taking, which is why, in part, my carbs are so low. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so that's you know, this, mm. it's whether you want to call it intermittent fasting. Technically, it's not, but it's it's like that or a form of macronutrient timing, kind mm-hmm. of saving the carbs till later in the day. Yeah, I'm also um, I'm also taking the other half of that breakfast. I usually eat maybe eight ounces of turkey burger, and and eating that right uh, maybe within 45 minutes or so of my workout. I'm I'm training with our with a handful of our different coaches in the afternoons, and so I don't I, I hate going into a into a training session starving. Yeah, and so I eat a little bit of protein. It, I feel great during the workout. I don't feel so uh, ravenous after the workout and when I get home. And so that also helps a little bit with my, All my right. cravings so, at night. So there's a question in there that, we, Alice, you wanted him to eat more fat. So I want, you to, I, want to, I want you to go into like why you wanted him to go into more fat and why we had to lower his carbs as a result. But we had to keep his calories matched because we want to keep the weight, fat loss going. So why would why would the sa- salmon and the mackerel? So with Todd, we you know again, I, well he allows me to talk about. Yeah, his you can stuff. talk about my okay, very good. Labs Just as long as I yeah. can, you know, have your permission, sir. Yeah, my permission. So uh, Todd does have some cardiovascular risks, uh, family history, as well as some you know uh, issues that we have found in his previous labs. So we do have uh, extensive lab testing looking at his uh, saturated fats versus his omegas versus mm-hmm. his monounsaturated fats. Um, and he actually came up deficient uh, for, you know, the monounsaturated fats. And, you know, of course, the literature does show that, that uh, you know, having those at higher levels is going to be uh, cardioprotective for, uh, you know, the patients, you know. So that's essentially why we went with that. If we had to eliminate one of the macros, um, then, you know, of course, the carbs would definitely have to go since the fats right. are in for him in particular a little bit more necessary uh, when it comes to his health. Now, so there was a f- health component in this. So if, we, but that, I could, that basically for me it trumps. You know, obviously getting a six pack. Yeah, but we could, it's more important. We could have gotten you the six pack with six pack is easier, meaningless if you're dead. Well, I'm saying like we could have gotten you the six pack with with an alternative macro breakdown, like higher uh-huh. carbs, lower fat, which, which, which I think would have been easier for me. But we went the opposite right. route to also consider the health component. Yeah. So, but you know, that's a that's an aside. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, I will run a panel, like a Boston Heart panel on him right before Stark Naked to see, you know, the combination of higher fat plus caloric deficit, what it does to, you know, someone's lipid panel. As an aside, Stark Naked's coming up um, in June. Uh, go to our website. You'll you'll easily see all the, the, you'll find a list of competitors. I'll be one all the way down at the bottom. Um, Click on my face and make a a donation to Alzheimer's OC. or, Or vote for Jess. (laughs) <laughs> Jess is also you can doing for her, but give me the money. Yeah. Uh, so, so aside from banking your carbs at, at night, what else do you do to kind of prevent yourself from, you know, opening I, I, the door? I, I think that uh, that dur- during the during the day, celery hurt, helps a lot. It's like this, you know, fills your belly up with a bunch of fiber. Um, uh, just the the sense of crunching. You yeah, know, the, for the sure. mouth feel it's it's all it's all kind of helpful uh, psychologically speaking. Coffee is a huge help. It curbs my appetite. <laughs> That's nice. I'm yeah. freaking wired on caffeine all day long. It's the way you should be. Yeah. Caffeinated it, Todd. Plus it makes life Caffeinated better in Todd general. is like Todd 2.0. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, 
uh, having, uh, I mean, I, I don't do this myself, but, but if I were, was a Stark student, I would have macro plate, um, or some other variation of that create my, my meals. So all I had to do is open them up and eat them and not eat anything outside of those boxes. Um, that, that makes things so easy because it's so Hey, do you remember Nutrisystem? <laughs> Nutrisystem. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was back in the day. Yeah. Tenny cool. Craig. So, so coffee, celery, eating less during the first half of the day. Yep. Uh-huh. Those are kind of the, the big three. Yeah, and I think there's, it's pretty normal to have to be the most susceptible to cravings at the end of the day. Isn't that, is that right? It's a normal human thing, or is that just special to me? I, that's pretty individualized, I think. Well, oh, is it really? I, you know, cravings can happen. Like sugar cravings, Yeah, that they kind can of happen thing, or, like throughout the day, but it's when you're off work and you're at home, you're like, uh... The pantry is calling my name. Hold on a second. Uh huh. Or like the Ben and Jerry's that's in the freezer all of a sudden is gone, you know? So, like, when you're at work, you can't really do that. Like, you can have a big uh-huh. lunch, but you might come back to work and kind of fall asleep. Whereas when you're at home and you're unrestrained from work responsibilities and it's like and nobody's your, watching, like nobody's watching, you got Jimmy Fallon being obnoxious, like, boom, I'm just gonna go with three pizzas and some Cheez Its, you know? Right. So, at home is more conducive to. F- to caving into those cravings. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is this is actually the first time that I've really experienced <laughs> managing my my caloric intake. I'm laughing because when you did Stark Naked a couple of years ago, you told me about your experience and you said, "Yeah, I just walk through that shit." Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, "I will break you." <laughs> no, I, I actually don't. I'm enjoying this. I mean, it's, maybe that sounds twisted. Yeah, but we are. I, I like the I like the process, <laughs> yeah. and I, I think it's way I think it's way more effective. Um, but it, it's definitely it's definitely more challenging. What 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 the most interesting thing to me about uh, that, that I've learned over the last uh, couple of months is is my is how um, unaware I was, and and likely everyone else is in terms of what they're taking in. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Uh, I think I gave you this example uh, several months back when I started tracking my my calories. Um, I went to In and Out for lunch, and later that night had a gluten free pizza, and it was like it was like thirty nine hundred calories or something like that. And I still could have eaten more. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's I was like going to say that, times that, what that, I'm that eating means, right now. Yeah, that means you, did, you didn't go all out at In and Out because it could be yeah, but easily that, more I mean, than that's that. a, that's a really that's an eye opening experience because yeah. you finish that meal, you feel full, you fall asleep. An hour later, you wake up and you're hungry again. Yeah. Like there's no, I mean, it's it's easy to understand when you pay attention to what you're taking in why Americans are overweight. I had a I have a, I had a student who realized that he was putting he didn't really like like coffee. He actually liked to scream. Like when he realized how much cream <laughs> he was putting in. Ah, that's funny. He, he was like he actually measured out a tablespoon of the creamer. He's like. The shit is this? Like, what like, is this? Like pissing in the wind. Like, what is or this? Or he was really like putting like, you know, two cups of cream Farting. with like I a quarter cup up. of coffee, you know. It's, it is like, it is an educational experience for people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, too, also, so I, I don't do well with a lot of dairy. And so sometimes as a treat, I would opt for dairy alternatives for ice cream, right? Like coconut. Mm -hmm. ice cream or almond ice cream but i mean coconut is just it's so it's even more fatty than like the regular dairy ice i mean there's massive amounts of calories in it you know because i'll be you know once the pint's open you know it's over (laughs) it's over you know so you can't can't recap it the amount yeah exactly like (laughs) i didn't think those things even went back on um (laughs) you know so it's like but coconut ice cream is just crazy crazy amounts of calories you know and of course no one gets just plain vanilla coconut ice cream it's got the walnuts and chocolates and caramels mm-hmm. and whatever. But yeah, so I mean, those kinds of things like people don't realize or like they think they're doing something like, oh yeah, I'll just, I'll get the dairy-free ice cream. It's like zero calories, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All but right. It feels like hunger. Feels you are like definitely hungry when you are... Wrapping at your chamber door. Yeah, yeah. when you are mildly never, starving never yourself more. for a period mm-hmm. of time. Yeah. So there, there's never a, eat again. There's, a, there's, a, there's some downsides to this. Right. Um, I'm assuming we're going to talk about that a little bit. What do you mean downsides? Downsides to, looking, to dieting. Looking like no, the, we're going to stick mostly to like strategies. To to, okay. Strategies. Yeah. Uh, we do have we, a podcast we did, on we did, it. Yeah, we, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Do you remember what that was called? That was, a, that was after we did Sark Naked. Tyler and I did Sark Naked and we talked about some of the 
after effects or the during effects. And we also talked about the perils of fat, of fat loss, like on our first podcast together. Yeah. Uh, we talked about what the body will do as a response, okay. as far as your metabolic rate, your hunger, your hormonal drops. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Alice has talked throughout every podcast <laughs> about uh, how, and this is technically structured malnutrition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like, like, I mean, it sounds kind of harsh, but it's, even in a low grade, like really like low grade, and even though you're taking your vitamins and stuff like that, so you're not. Which is a case for supplements. Yes, like, nutrients without calories is what we used to call those in the late '90s. We used to, <laughs> we used to call we used to call supplements nutrients without calories because even oh, register, even registered dietitians who were asked to do to give a structure a diet that gave everyone 100 percent of the RDA but stay within a in a caloric frame that didn't make you fat, they all failed. Mm -hmm. They all failed that little experiment. So it was it was not possible to provide everyone with adequate nutrients across the spectrum while keeping calories under control. So if you're happy being fat and nourished, you'll get that. But if you want to change your body composition, there is going to be a detriment of nutrition somewhere, mm -hmm. right? And like uh, like uh, Alice said, there's uh, the, the one of the, the the food group that could have gone like the went for you was carbohydrates so that's that's not just starches that's fruits are calorically powerful too mm -hmm. so when, when you're not getting you're not getting fruits you're you're also not getting certain phytonutrients and phytochemicals and antioxidants and whatnot so it's so that really brings in case for ivs and and right. and uh, uh broad spectrum nutrients right alice Yes, uh, although there is something to note about Todd. So <laughs> he is a robot. I'm going to tighten my belt a little here. <laughs> I'm not, no joke. I'm actually God. tightening my belt right now. <laughs> so so Todd is a robot. I mean, he has been accused of being a robot because, you know, whatever any of us tells him to do anything, he'll just do it without questioning. Um, he is eating extremely nutrient-dense mm. foods. Whatever food he is eating, it is nutrient-dense. For example, I'm going to make the case for sardines. Now, uh, yes, I, am, I know, I know. I'm a sardine pusher. Now, why is that the case? I mean, sardines are high in CoQ10, B12, this calcium. Oh, uh, cocaine. High in cocaine. Uh, cocaine. Cocaine. Like cocaine. cocaine. <laughs> and, of course, the omegas. In fact, Speaking uh, uh, well, I was going to say, one of my tips for dieting, you know. But only organic cocaine. Not at all. Anyway, so, uh, so he's eating that on a daily basis. Now, what? why are those important? Um, first of all, you know, uh, I have to say he doesn't take fish oil supplements supplements. So that's he's getting from his food. Uh, another thing, too, is that, you know, all those nutrients that I've uh, listed out, those are all powerful mitochondrial supporters. So, you know, I it's kind of interesting. If I were to give him just a diet of, like, white rice and horrible chicken, I don't know how his mind would be. So, you know, Todd does ask on a regular basis, hey, is my brain going? And I was like, oh, a little bit, just a little bit. You know, he yeah. has forgotten a few appointments here and there. But, you know, we don't have two Todds to compare where we'll give one person really horrible quality food versus the other. So, um, but yeah, nutrients are important. Um, and he is on some supplements to help boost that mitochondrial function as well. So back to strategies, Amir, you want to sure. share some? Um, well, one thing is, so, so yeah. Amir is not dieting now, but you have dieted. I you have, did start naked last I, year. I, so I we're kind dieted. of all collectively sharing. I have, I have dieted. Um, I once dieted. <laughs> Monday through Friday and Saturday, Sunday did not look different. And a lot of the people I talk to have wildly different lives Monday through Friday and Saturday, Sunday. Monday through Friday, they're working 16-hour days, and then Saturday, Sunday, they're watching their kids suck at sports. Like, like that is – that does not Im Im uh, demand that my diet has to change on those days or at least the timing of my meals like if i eat breakfast at seven i eat breakfast at seven if i eat lunch at noon i eat lunch at noon mm -hmm. if i have a snack at three i have a snack at three if i have dinner at eight i have dinner at eight plus or minus like an hour right but right. It's, it's not like saturday like i have this completely different life five days out of the week and a completely different life twice out of the week uh the national weight control registry which is a, a three thousand plus members that have lost over 20 or 30 pounds and kept it off for for at least two years like that's the only way you can kind of get onto that registry. They they were they you know they're and, and they're studied kind of like how are you able to maintain a certain level of uh, weight loss? <laughs> and they said that their root that the routine quote unquote, which can sound kind of you know dirty word like oh I don't want to be in a routine. It's it's same same week like day over day. That doesn't mean they're eating the exact same foods, 
but their structure of their day, maybe their, their meal organization is, is the same. And mine was the same. And so you're not talking about the, cause you would have high and low days during that, right? Yeah. Or would it be but, about but, the same? But like, I wouldn't like intermittent fast on Monday, go keto on Wednesday, <laughs> do a juice cleanse on Thursday and then do a cheat day on Saturday. Like that, that's bullshit. Like that, like you're like when you, if you have children, Todd, you have children. Yes. Uh, do you remember when they were young? Like what time they took a nap? No. What time they fed? Yes. What time they took a nap, fed, nap, yeah. fed, nap, mm-hmm. fed, sleep, cranky, burp. Like it was on rhythm. And mm-hmm. anyone who's had, who's had children can like recall that time when everything had to be scheduled rigidly almost to keep their kind of their, their, their kids in a certain rhythm. Sure. And, and even when you cross time zones, like, Oh man, they're going to be cranky or like that. They're going to be off their nap pattern or the sleep pattern. So we can just apply that to us as an adult with, you know, this is when I have at breakfast. This is when I have lunch. This is when I have dinner. This is when I have a snack. These are the days I work out kind of planning, planning. So I, there wasn't a drastic change from Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Along with the Saturday, Sunday thing, I'm kind of resistant to peer pressure. Tyler, you know this? <laughs> like, well, but of everyone, my peer pressure is the most influential, right? But like, <laughs> Tyler knows this from, from social peer pressure. Like, hey, Amir, you want to go? No. <laughs> or like, and it's really hard to kind of change my mind. And it's also hard to change my no, mind. No, thanks. I have a thing. Or like, I have a thing and it's called not anything. Amir goes... <laughs> Amir goes, oh, who's going to be there? Wait, I don't care. I'm not going to go. <laughs> or if I say yes, I'm also, you know, rigid on that side. Like, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, now with, with, uh, extra- but I'll leave promptly at eight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I, I'm already, I'm already leaving. Uh, so at the, on the food side, it's the same thing. Like when it's like, Hey, Amir, come on, have a slice of this cake. No, I want the cake. Trust me. Like that, I'm not saying you can't have the craving. Like the, I, you're not going to suppress the, the the craving, which is what you said, Todd. Like you're gonna, it's going to come. But what you do about it is different, right? So you like, can no, embrace I embrace it. Give it a nice warm. Like hug. no, I, I've 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 had Love it. So <laughs> sometimes people bring pra- pastries in. Like oh, Mir, did you get one of those donuts? Like no, I've had donuts before. I, I, I'm I'm fine. So okay, it, but th- for, that's not a tip. That's yeah, not a I was tip. gonna say for the people who no, don't have the, like a cold, calloused no, heart no, like you. I, I have a I have a I have a I have a warm, bellowing heart. It's like the Dr. Seuss Grinch heart. It's like grow three sizes. <laughs> like I, no, it's it, it. Like you are going to. So that's kind of like the you are going to be experienced with temptation all the time. So if you're always like I have a big heart, so I'm just gonna say yes. Like you're gonna you're gonna fail. Like you're gonna fail. You have to say no. But that's not one of my tips. Okay. Okay. So, but let's, ha- get, let's get back to the tips. The so tips. Keeping the routine the same. Monday routine through the same Sunday. is very, 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 very important. Good one. Uh, monitoring my body weight every single day. Good one. Uh, not to look for a daily change because I, I didn't really give a shit about the change. I wanted the trend. I wanted the data to understand the trend. And the trend was the week over week change that we've, we've talked about mm-hmm. so often. So, explain to our listeners kind of how we monitor progress from a weight loss standpoint we take a seven day average of your weight and then we compare that seven day average to the second seven day average Mm -hmm. now your body weight will fluctuate at least two percent off of sweat and water and bowel movements that have yet to be you know released Mm -hmm. uh you know and so on so a person who weighs 200 pounds could easily weigh 204 and 196 on Mm -hmm. the subsequent days so and throw in a menstrual cycle yeah oh man (laughs) Yeah, I hate, yeah. It, I hate or, it when that happens. Or if you're on the depo <laughs> shot, if you're on the depo shot, you can gain 30 pounds across a week. It's like that's nasty, right? So we can't necessarily comp- compare week over week to in those cases. It's a trend. But the tr- trend, like, even if it's monthly trend, that, that mm-hmm. you know takes a more patient game. Uh, but yeah, so when you're – if you're comparing week over week, you have to use data to make that week trend uh-huh. appear. So that's the daily weigh-ins. Okay. And even if I didn't monitor my food ever, which I don't currently, I know when my weight trends up, I'm kind of getting a little off the reservation. And if my weight is trending down, I know I'm unreading, maybe maybe not intentionally because I might be in maintenance and so on. Hmm. So that's tip two. And tip three is the food choice spectrum, right? So if, if I'm a fat person, meaning I carry too much body fat, and I drink Mountain Dew. Going from Mountain Dew, 
let's say you drink a lot of Mountain Dew, like like it's all you drink. You because you're still in junior high. Yeah, exactly. Like Mountain Dew Red Zone or whatever that's just called, <laughs> the, the, the red bottle. And you decide that I'm going to quit and I'm going to go to water, La Crotch water. Hey, don't like steal that. my tips. <laughs> uh, and, and then you realize that you have a real difficulty doing that. That's going to derail you really quick. So the spectrum is step by step moving in that Lacroche direction, like like the the healthy water direction. That's Lacroix okay. if, for those of you that don't and, know. And what that might about. that might mean choosing a less problematic beverage as a stepping stone. Mm-hmm. So when I like I don't drink soda anymore, but when it was in the dieting process, it was soda, diet soda, Coke Zero, water. Like that, that progression might have taken a couple of days or a couple of weeks or a couple of months, but some people like when they, you know, these like equated to quitting smoking, people try to quit cold Turkey. Some are successful. Many are not. Mm -hmm. And, but there's transition periods in between. So across other things, that's a vanilla latte to a regular latte to an Americano with cream to black coffee kind of thing. Well, some people think binary, like it's either all or nothing. And there's usually more nothing than there is all because they just keep falling off the wagon. Like, oh, should I fucked up? You know, it's like, well, why don't you get in, put in some intermediate shades of, of pink be- between white and red, right? Like there's, there's a lot of value in that. And people think that, that oh, that doesn't, that doesn't work. I can't like do those things. I just, I've got to, I got to go all in or it's nothing. It's like, well, we're going to have this conversation every six months or every six weeks because you can't seem to hang with the all or nothing. So that that is that is a tip that I use for my for my personal journey through you know soda, but other people can use it for you know junk foods or any sort of meal that is throwing them off. Hmm. The food choice spectrum, TM. The food choice spectrum, like it. Alice, you got any? Well, I mean, I've never really gone much into caloric deficit ever. I mean, dieting. I mean. But uh, on purpose. On purpose. No, not on purpose. We've seen you shrink because you look skinny. I well, the stress. You know, listen. <laughs> very <laughs> offensive. All right. It's not offensive. But I mean, I have gone on different diets uh, in the past fifteen years. Uh, been into the keto world like a few times. Been completely, you know, paleo a few times as well. And those are those are difficult. Might I add? Uh, don't try to go keto right before an exam. That's uh, almost failed my uh, quarter in cardiology and med school trying to do that and if you switch too quickly you can poop your pants oh yeah that's you but that didn't happen to me so (laughs) or if you just eat in general you poop your pants oh (laughs) Oh, wait that's just me sorry oh lord so um again i don't know it's uh, i don't know i mean i there is something that i do it is a practice of like some sort of discipline and this is maybe an asian thing maybe this I, this does not Racist. unfortunately apply to most of our population but i have been known to put things like cupcakes in the fridge and just let it sit there as i stare at it day after day and not eat it so i know it's weird but uh, that's kind just to of torture yourself no just to basically well, practice not eating eating it or just saying no That's and again weird. i know it's a weird thing so they're, they're, I, I drove my roommates insane with that by the way but i they did eat the cupcake no they did not <laughs> i would have killed them but <laughs> uh, but again it's just well my tip is again it's a tip that i kind of had for todd just how you have to eat a, a more nutrient dense diet um in order for your brain to work properly. If mm. your prefrontal cortex is shut down because you don't have the proper nutrients to fire your neurons, then you're going to make bad decisions. Your limbic system will take over and you're going to eat crap. So, so there that's is, kind of my There take. is a lot that's of research out there around the idea that like, like your muscles' willpower is something that can be exercised. It can be depleted. It can be fatigued. And it can be strengthened. Over time, there's a really good book out called... You mean your willpower as a muscle? Is that what you're saying? As a muscle, yeah, exactly. So there's a book called Willpower, Rediscovering the Greatest Human Strength. It's written by Roy Baumeister. Uh, We'll link to that in the show notes. Orbison? Bowelmeister? Bowelmeister. Bowelmeister. The Bowelmeister. The Bowelmeister. So anyways, that's a really good book. has a lot of really interesting things on things like the role that glucose in the brain plays on your ability to resist temptation, things like that. So that's a really interesting topic. And it's interesting you mentioned the sort of self-induced depletion of 
you know, your willpower. That because reminds me of Clockwork Orange. When like mm. they like bring him out on stage and they bring out this naked chick and he like starts to like get like really nauseous like when he like wants to like touch her and like like to like c- cure him of being violent and sexual like that's what I imagine she's like in front of the refrigerator like <laughs> <laughs> like collapsing to her knees like like the, the muffin is like using the force on her shit like that is some straight Asian it's it's it is <laughs> and I actually did make a crap ton of cookies and would not eat it. Like it, I was that type of man. my weird. my roommates would hate me by or the way. At least like because <laughs> like, like, they would eat it and they would get like, fat. Like <laughs> donate it to somebody needy. <laughs> well, my roommates all ate it. But, okay, you know, they're needy. They're, they're needy. Yeah. Well, being being you your know? roommate, <laughs> <laughs> be needy as fuck. So that's all I have. Just I mean, again, it's a practice of willpower. Again, not it's gonna work. It's not gonna work for everyone. It's not gonna work overnight. But I think people need to understand. Mm-hmm deprivation sometimes you know i think in this society we are it's this instant gratification over and over and over again and that's just one of the reasons why we are in the trouble that we are in right now Hmm. that's a good point tyler all right so i do the banking banking what i call i call banking energy substrates so Mm -hmm. you think your fats and carbs towards the end of the day so normally my breakfast would consist of protein with maybe like some carbs or fats, but when I'm dieting, I eliminate that and go just for lean protein. I, at my size, hitting my protein targets is is challenging when I'm dieting because it's a pretty significant amount. And so I've found is that I, I can't really, well, for one, if I skip a meal, like if I were to actually do intermittent, well, not that intermittent fasting, skipping a meal, but I'm saying if I don't at least get all three meals, I'm not, I won't ever hit my protein targets. So I always start with just a lean protein source for breakfast. That's my number one. The other thing I do is um, I always, in order to hit my protein targets, I generally need either a shake or some sort of protein snack. So when I'm dieting, I keep a gluten-free turkey jerky packet on me at all times. And I will have that at whatever point during the day. So, you know, you can get certain ones or like we have the biltong, the, is like a is a really good one here because mm-hmm. I think a packet of that has forty five grams of protein, very very lean. So I will keep a packet of that on me at all times. And so on a day that I don't train, because when I was dieting, I was also a re- uh, had reduced my training a little bit. So on a day that I don't train, I will have that as a snack at some point when it's most advantageous for me from a craving standpoint. Like Todd, uh, like me a little bit of mouthfeel. So. Uh, as as uh, one of them I'm actually currently enjoying is a LaCroix sparkling water. My favorite is the passion fruit. If you're American, it's pronounced LaCroix. <laughs> yeah, or LaCroix, uh, as I was told one time. So that's another one, too. It's carbonated. It's kind of, it's flavored. It feels kind of like a treat. So, you know, in between my lunch, which when you're dieting is somewhat measly, and my dinner, I might opt for one of those because it kind of, makes you feel full and there's some nice mouthfeel and things like that. So I like the LaCroix yeah, a lot good. as well. Really um, good. And then uh, one of the things too was I was really selective about where I would take lunch meetings during my dieting period. So I go out and I meet with a lot of people. Sometimes we get lunch, that sort of thing. Uh, during Stark Naked, someone says, hey, do you want to get lunch? I'm like, yep, we can go here or here. <laughs> one of the places I would go to was Pokey. Pokey, you can get eight ounces of ahi tuna on greens with basically a little bit of, you know, you might have like a little bit of sesame oil or something in there, but it's basically I could get eight ounces of lean protein with a lot of vegetables and I would feel really, really satiated after that. And it was about 350 calories for the meal. So pretty much all of my lunch meetings were at the same pokey place for the entire duration of Stark Naked last year. That's a that's a good point. Like I remember when I was in the kind of like the the mix of Stark Naked, kind of really getting you know ripped. Uh, a friend of mine was like, "Hey, do you want to go to this this bar and get some like nachos, beer, watch the game?" And I'm like, uh, "Yeah, I would love to. How about sashimi and, su- and uh, sake?" It's like I'm in. So I got my little socializing on. I got to you know watch the game because they had it there. I had to little have the little alcoholic beverage, which we haven't even talked about. Like it is, it is not faux pas. 
and, you know, unless you have alcoholic fatty liver or like fatty liver in general, you should probably like avoid that shit because you want to die. You don't want to die. But <laughs> like, you know, there, there was still some alcohol in there, but I had sashimi. So there's, you know, z- nothing impeding my progress while maintaining a normal life, which is like why I, why I mentioned the like resistant to peer pressure thing. Like, no, how about like it was like, yeah, we can go here or here. That's you're kind of pretty much channeling this challenging, uh, channeling the same thing. Yeah, right? because I will always go hang out with people. Yeah, like Unlike you will. You. Yeah, you will. But like, I'd be like, hey, that that sounds great. How about sashimi and sake? You know, or how about uh, how about I cook you dinner? You know, <laughs> like you know, when you come over, so I don't really want to go and uh, be subject to a, a wet burrito at El Torito and. And, and like <laughs> gain nine pounds of sodium and shit over the next uh, 24 hours. But there are some bullet tips that you could kind of throw in there, like that are just really bite sized tips, no pun intended, uh, that we used to use in the bodybuilding world. I don't, I'm not saying we, I was an, I was a bodybuilder, like when I would be around them, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like one, I was in the gym at the same time as them. Yeah, I was around, <laughs> I was around, I was carrying their fanny packs. <laughs> I was handing them their cans you were of tuna. Washing them, you were washing their Zubas. Yeah, I was, uh, I was shooting them with insulin as they were, you know, eating their Snickers. Oh, <laughs> you ever seen that before? No. Guys, guys like blasting arms eats the Snickers, shoots insulin, and, like, his gr- arms go, like, three inches. Like, what, what am I seeing that's, here? Yeah. That's scary. It's like, it's, it's, yeah, that's it's, sure it, it, would kill yourself. Imme- but, immediately, yeah. uh, American Gladiator. So, uh, brush your teeth after meals. Why? Like, right away. Why? Uh, the, what? <laughs> the, well, the clean teeth and the mint will kind of, like, avoid, like, you don't want to eat again. Huh, that's interesting. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, like, you know, the whole, like, Brush, mouthwash, kind of thing. So it screws up your palate a little bit. Yeah, kind of like, like smoke. You can take up smoking. Like it, uh, smoking well, screws well, up your well, palate. Smoking, right? Well, smoking <laughs> actually the same thing. Yeah, smoking actually <laughs> aids in fat loss because when the people quit smoking, they hey, can let's take, just real quick make sure that we're not. They all know we're not advocating for that. <laughs> well, if this is your first episode, yeah. you might not know that. But if this is your seventh episode or eighth episode or a hundred eighth episode in, you probably know we're fucking joking. Yeah. But like, but organic but cocaine but will help with weight loss. When people quit smoking. They they taste food again, uh, and, and they I, was gain like, I was like, "Oh shit, food is amazing! What have I been missing?" And then then they gain weight, and then you know, then and they, there's the hand to mouth thing. That's a thing. That's that's not, that's not a thing. I mean, there's multiple things. Like that's why the body's things, so cool. Yeah. There's the body's so cool. It's like you can't really outsmart it. So brushing your teeth after meals, chewing on gum, mm. uh, tends to be. I got an issue with that, though. Doc, will you back me up on this? Yes. There is potential negative side effects to chewing gum all the time, I didn't time, say right? it's healthy. Yes. I didn't say it's healthy. Okay. 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 N- n- <laughs> these don't, so these clear. might not pass the health true-false kind of... Like the cigarettes thing? Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, another is cucumbers. Like you said, celery, cucumbers, pickles. Pickles have a little more sodium. Have a lot more sodium, anyway. Uh, but, you know, that's another possibility. So, like... You know, now there's this thing about people used to call them negative calorie foods. You remember that? Remember that? Remember that yeah. shit? Like, yeah, yeah. oh, it takes more calories to burn to break it down than it does to eat it. So it's, you're actually in a negative calorie state. <laughs> it's like how much how much fucking cucumbers are you gonna eat a day? Like, where actually that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna matter. It's like negative point seven calories. Like, what is that gonna do? But that does help. Uh, they're very low caloric value, and they do provide some crunch and some water and satiety uh, and satiety. Now, if you ever uh, watch uh, the internet. There is this cool <laughs> video about the, with this Rastafarian uh, uh, talking about how cool cucumbers are. Cucumba. Like, you ever you've seen that video? <laughs> it's really good. No. That's what, uh, rec- recommended viewing is the Rastafarian. We'll, uh, we'll link it to the show notes. <laughs> talking about, uh, you know, that, that, that works. Sucking on ice cubes. <laughs> that was a nightmare. That sounds awful. Yeah, that does sound I'm not awful. doing that. I'm not going to do that one either. All right. I'll stick with smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, getting your steps in. If you are out and about getting your neat up, which we've talked about before, I think we did mm-hmm. it on maybe the whole podcast on knee. I yeah, don't know. yeah. Uh, non-exercise activity, so you know, walking around doing stuff. You're probably not eating at the same time, hmm. and it doesn't require a ton of energy to do so. Like a structured cardio interval, like a spin class where you're burning 950 calories, bruh. Like when when you're done with that event. Your body's going to want the food back. Let's go, your your liver yeah. and your brain are like, uh, okay, that was great, but uh, I'm, I want my I want that energy back. Whereas neat, you can accumulate a low energy intensive activity without your without taxing your mm-hmm. body's appetite uh, triggers or your ability to recover from you know the day or the the next workout and so on. Hmm. 
not watching a lot of TV. Yeah, that's another interesting one, too. The intensity at which you choose to do your cardio can have a big effect on your appetite and cravings, right? Big appetite. Uh, big appetite control or or lack there. But I remember... So, yeah. Well, I was going to say, so so not so talking purely about fat loss. Yeah, fat so loss. N- so not talking about the like exercise benefits or the conditioning or the cardiovascular benefits or okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Just, just talking fat loss. Yeah. A, ca- a calorie is a calorie, whether it was burned at 95% intensity or at 60% intensity, okay. right? We're on all on the same page there. Okay. Talking strictly fat loss. Yeah. So, the but the point being that if you are going to to strive to expend a certain amount of calories through uh, steady state cardio, yeah. whether you do that over a longer period of time at a lower intensity or a shorter period of time at a higher intensity, if it's the same amount of expenditure, mm-hmm. that's not going to have a big difference on your rate of fat loss. However, if it if one or the other has an effect on your appetite, mm-hmm. which you may or may not have the ability to control yeah. the cravings, then that can actually, you can put some intentionality into thinking about, well, what's going to make me feel better or which one's going to make me want to come home and raid the pantry yeah. because I'm exhausted. And I, like, I had a student, he was uh, restructuring his fat loss diet. He was Main, at maintenance for the most amount of time for a pretty long time and he was like okay I want to start dieting he was like okay yum uh, and I got through talking about his intake and he's like what about cardio I'm like oh, what about it he's like can I do it I'm like sure what do you want to do for cardio he's like well I love swimming okay how do you feel after swimming he's like man I'm starving swimming's out <laughs> that, that simple it is that fucking simple like if if you get out of the pool after half an hour and you're like oh my god i'm so hungry uh guess what skis it's you got 1700 calories a day so <laughs> you're you're like you unless you plan on having that and that only like your chances are for of a successful day banked for uh, in your diet progress is gonna be low so like swimming's out uh you can soak in the jacuzzi a little bit uh, but that's not really cardio that's more for like rest and recovery uh which is also aids in fat loss, but more indirectly, right? Yeah. So, uh, doesn't mean everyone can't swim, but if you swim and you are ravenous afterwards, probably shouldn't swim for fat loss. Hmm. Interesting stuff. What else, Tyler? You got any more for us? Nope. Those are my main ones. I'd like to talk a little bit more about the national weight control industry. Okay. Okay. Uh, like not like the website or whatever. So, uh, the majority, so the, the, the majority of them, most of them ate breakfast, but it wasn't really, uh, it wasn't really a big deal if they didn't eat breakfast. Uh, they all were in a caloric deficit. Some were high fat, low carb. Some were higher carb, lower fat. But they all had a caloric deficit of some kind. They all had a high neat and watched very very little TV. Now the average kid in America watches eight hours of TV a day. It's a lot of TV. Eight hours? Eight hours a day. Are you sure? That's a lot of TV. Yeah, that is eight hours of TV a day. You, 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 when they get home from school, it's like three o'clock. Right? Uh, it's not a week. So the, the NEAT was high in all the, uh, the people in the, in the registry. The NEAT was high. They all, the most success, the most important thing that they all found was monitoring their body weight. They did not uh, deviate too much from a Monday through Friday or Saturday, Sunday. They were very kind of regimented in that, in that case. Uh, like I said, uh, some, most ate breakfast, some didn't. They all had a caloric deficit. They all had a high neat and watched very little television. Um, yeah. And the, 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 the key for these fat loss tips is they're not acute tips. They are to help you consistent, like, like Todd, you opened it up. Like this is your fourth, this is your fifth month of consistent dieting, right? So these tips are, are only as good as they, you're all able to maintain and sustain and consistently apply this diet, right? Mm-hmm. So the diet will work after a period of time consistently. So the, the, the tip of all tips is to be, be consistent. But like how you are consistent might change from one person to another, or depending mm-hmm. on what you need to be doing in in your in your in your structure of your day. But to go on a diet for 
21 days is worthless, I think. Mm -hmm. And what, what, what about uh, uh, how far into a deficit one should go when you start dieting? That's a great question. Like, you mean like how big the uh, yeah. how big of a deficit? Yeah. So, I you now on paper, on paper, the bigger you are, the bigger I can make the deficit. Okay. So let's say, for example, one percent of your body weight is what I want you to lose every week, and you're you know two hundred fifty pounds. You know, like I could be like a weekly pretty big week, weekly weight weight loss, but that's gonna have a big deficit attached to it. The smaller you are at the detriment of some people's emotions, like the, the smaller you are, the smaller deficit I make and therefore a slower rate of progress. Mm -hmm. But usually the people who are really, really small want the just as fast as the bigger people have. But I have to put that all into a context. Like, listen, honey, you're 115. You're not 315. I'm not going to take a hacksaw to your body. Like you're you're almost there. Like I'm like, where do you want me to take weight off? <laughs> like, it's like well, I just want to be skinny. Like, is that wrong? Yes, it's wrong. Like, I'm gonna f I'm gonna help formulate your goals, right? So, uh, the 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 deficit is kind of structured based on your size, but then again, the oh, that's on paper because in practice, a larger deficit means technically less food, mm -hmm. and th there, there's a reason why you're obese, right? Like, there is more things than on the paper would explain. There are appetite signals. There's, there's stuff happening in the limbic system of the brain. There's hormones that are kind of like haywire. There's, there's mouthfeel that is more intense in obese patients than in regular people. Hmm. So when we talk about mouthfeel, it's, it's how food feels in your mouth. Like, mm, that's so good and gooey and juicy and whatever. Like moist, mm, moist, <laughs> mm. you know, like mouthfeel. So when you eat a piece of food and it like feels like feels good on your tongue and your palate, that's mouthfeel. When you're obese, that mouth feel is more intense. Does that yeah, make sense? that makes sense. So yeah. anything you eat has a heightened sense of food reward, and you want more of that food. But if you're on paper, like, oh, yeah, like I'm going to have a big deficit, it may not work because of so many things that are happening internally. Uh, like cookies smell better to obese people than it does to everyone in this room. Now, it smells good to all of us, but it smells different to somebody who is, you know, 300 plus pounds, 40% body fat, and they're in a constant state of food reward, food reward, food reward. Mm -hmm. Even though rationally, they might be like, I need to change this or I'm gonna die. Their, 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 in, their internal reptile brain is like, yes, 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 you know? So that, that's, how, that's how it determines. Now, if we're, if we're in a normal body shape, body weight, but we have like an aggressive time bound thing like a wedding, start naked, or maybe you're starting late into, into something like that. Then we can do a, a, a more aggressive deficit, but that deficit is temporary, more temporary than a regular deficit would be. I see. So if, instead of putting you on like a small deficit or a medium deficit for eight weeks, I might put you on a larger one for f three weeks. But then, you know, that, that doesn't, that might not be conducive to like what happened after the, after the third week, right? You might just mm -hmm. like rebel and just go crazy. So there's a lot of things that get considered there. So on paper, that's how, kind of how it works. But in practice, it's more delicate. It just depends on who, uh, who the cuckoo bird I'm dealing with. Gotcha. I do have one thing to note though. So, I mean, everyone knows at this point that Todd is on the juice. Yeah, I'm juicing. Yes. Yes. That Ju doesn't juicing, mean like that carrot juice, like, apple juice. Like, what is that? Yeah. What is that guy? The guy's name, the juice master guy, who, who like <laughs> moved trucks with his with his mouth. I don't mean Jack Lalanne. I mean the other guy. <laughs> I don't know. Jim Carrey used to spoof him on In Living Color. Never mind. So, um, something to warn about people, at least you know, going into caloric deficit. I mean, he. I mean, Todd looks the way that he does because he's doing everything. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to basically make a comment as like, no, nah, man, he looks that way because he's on the juice. And yeah, it does help. And I'm pretty sure it does help with his cognitive function as well as maintaining muscle mass as well. But I mean, he's doing everything else, you know. Uh, so I am coming across a lot of patients who are like, hey, hey, can you, uh, give me, can you prescribe me some testosterone? And I was like, oh, God, no, you don't. You haven't earned it yet. So just a note for, of course, you know, that is yeah. something that can happen help but it is again not the magic bullet yeah i mean so we are gonna jessica is going to link in the show notes uh the podcast where we talked more about the effects of dieting 
one without going into them, one of them is decreased hormone function or hormone production. And oh, so, yeah. Yeah. so the difference is like Amir and I, di- we, you know, you can diet. And then my, what happened is, is one of the negative effects I experienced was a drop in hormone production, which is, which Todd is, is accounting for with the hormone replacement. So that's, right. but, it, but, but you're still in order to have the effect of dieting from a, a body fat standpoint, you still have to create the caloric deficit. The difference is you're manipulating one of the variables that could mm-hmm. be potential fallout. So that is, that is something to think about, but yeah, I mean, you still have to diet to have the effect, but what you're doing is you're preventing one of the negative side effects essentially. Well, no, because his, his, his hormones are going to drop too. Yeah. But like, but it, yeah, yeah, it's, but it's, not. A, it's a slower drop or it's, it's, it's not as a big of a drop or you can, and you can move that needle too, depending yeah. on things like that. But, um, before we wrap up, uh, I'm going to turn over for the closing song to our new producer, Jess. Really? Uh, sing yeah. Like Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, sing something pretty for us. Do you want that mic or you want mine? What? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's so ner- no, guys, that, that's still on me. On the spot. That's still me. I'm just was imitating National Jess. Anthem. Here she is. You guys always sing on here? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you he did. Sing? Should we stand? I'm no, standing what do you want already. Me to do? Just sing a song. What's your favorite song? Um, gosh, you're making me like hot right now. For our listener. <laughs> um, well, it's the first time for everything. <laughs> I hate you. Oh my god. I don't know. I got Happy birthday. You can always go with Yeah, back. happy birthday. Happy birthday. Star Spangled Banner. Come on. You want me to sing the Star yeah. Spangled Banner? Yeah, These whole it twice. like minute ahead, and a half. Do it song. right now. Right now. No, just the, the just the first few. few yeah, Rockets Red Glare and then go from there. Go ahead. Okay, I need to stand up. Okay, okay we stand should up. all stand. We should all stand. Oh, wow, should this is stand. getting I can't, serious. I can't, I can't sit down and sing. Um, okay. I'm check out my gum. My, that's my tip. Chew gum. Don't listen to them. Okay. Uh, she's standing up. She's taking a deep breath. need you to breath. put your uh, hand over your heart, please. Okay. It's done. Tyler, stand up, bro. Yeah, Tyler. <laughs> okay, let me think. Hold on. Come on. Come on, Jess. You can do this. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming. Wow. That's it. No, you're done. You're done. Um, Just hold on a second. Uh, Ty- Tyler, you're fired. Jess, uh, congratulations. Wow. Yeah.